our, our episode today is basically we're gonna focus on the best picture nominees mm. for this show because it, it, it would be an interesting thing to do a, a, a great big show about the Oscars in themselves but it, it, it's just the episodes episode would be so long or yeah. we'd have to split it into parts so we decided to look at a few of the best picture nominees um, I've seen there's, there was nine this year I think yeah. and I've seen eight of them Lady Bird has still not premiered I think at the time of this recording in Finnish theaters so I haven't seen that but I've seen the rest and um, and let's just say that I don't know what the final po what the final voting results were in in uh, in the Academy Awards but based on the odds that bookies were giving mm. giving uh, or or different sorts of aggregate sites um, I have to say that I disagree with mm. a lot of them on what was the best movie of the year and this is and this has been happening now mm. this is the third year in a row for me yeah. that that the, 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 the film which wins best picture isn't in my view the best movie of the year or in this case this year even close mm. um, but I we we saw most of the all the, the the nominees that we've seen we've mostly see, seen apart yeah but the one that we won mm. uh, we saw together so I think maybe we should start with Shape let's, of Water let's start with Shape of Water Mm, it was a funny experience because I mean it was sort of like watching myself watch a movie basically I mean I was just not for whatever reason I wasn't touched by the movie I mean it was a beautiful movie it was beautifully made the performances were really good there was really nothing wrong with it except that I just didn't really I didn't care for it that much yeah. I mean, for me, it was like a, this sort of like an Amelie oh, side of, you know, this beautiful movie. And there's a bad guy and there's a lovable fish guy, and uh, this uh, this really uh, sort of lovely lead actress and lead act actor, and then uh, the best friend sort of person for the lead actress. And uh, it was, I don't know. But I can see why they would choose it. But then again, it's sort of it's kind of baffling to me that why why would that movie be so much better than the rest of the movies in a way? Yeah. Why do you think that they chose it? I don't know. I mean, I've been thinking about it, and for me, I can't I can't figure out a political reason to do it. Yeah. But I uh, <coughs> I had a friend. I was I was playing. Um, I was playing on a, with my Xbox online with a friend, mm. and he said that uh, I've got something. I think he said, um, I think he used the word awkward mm. to tell you. And I was like, well, what's going on? He's a very good friend of mine. No. I mean, I've, I've known him since I was 13, I no. think. And he said that we went to see. Um, we went to see Shape of Water with the mm. missus. Yeah. And at that point I cut him off and I said, and, and you thought it, was, it wasn't very good. Mm. And yeah, he, he, he had the same exact problem that I had with it. Because I'm a, I'm a Del Toro fan. I've seen mm. most of, I, I own most of his films. And I, I haven't seen quite all of them, but I've seen most of them. And I really like him. And I like the fact that there's this guy, this kind of nerdy guy, ma making films that, incorporate fantasy into a, into a sort of oh. real world believable setting. I like I, I like Blade 2 very mm. much. I like Hellboy. I like Hellboy 2 very mm. much. Um, I, I, I really like Pan's Labyrinth. Mm. And the problem with Shape of Water for me was that it didn't offer anything new into the Guillermo del Toro style of filmmaking. I think it, mm. it, it was it's the same thing all every time there's there's a there's a relatively normal uh 
female character. Mm. Uh, I mean, this uh, this happened in Pan's Labyrinth, and this yeah. happened in Hellboy, or some, let's say in Hellboy, the relatively normal female character is not normal in a way. Anyway, mm. she has powers and so on, but but she looks the most normal. Mm. And then there's a then there's a monster. Yeah. There's con there's this there's this there's this character that's sort of a monster. Uh, we which in the end isn't really threatening. Mm. In Pan's Labyrinth, it's Pan. Mm. In Hellboy, it's Hellboy. Yeah. And in this one, it's the, it's the, it's the fish creature. Yeah. Um, and, and then there's always some other monster mm. that's actually, who is usually human, yeah. who is actually threatening this mm. whole thing, which is Michael Shannon's character in this one. And uh, in Hellboy, it's, it's the Nazis. Yeah. And in Pan's Labyrinth, it's a, it's it's an army colonel. Yeah. Um, so I think this is the sort of thing that he's done before, and 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 like you said, it's a very well-made film. Mm. It's that the the cine cinematography is really wonderful. The production design is wonderful. The casting is, I think, the casting was a bit predictable, but yeah. good. Um, and then there's this sort of whole world that's been created mm. uh, and and you have in and then there's the symbolism there's the there's the in the shape of water there's water all the time mm. everywhere and then there's the green color which to me brought back memories of Amelie as well mm. uh, the whole green color color palette which sort of uh, refers back to that water and and, yeah. and there's, yeah. there's so much there's rain all the time there's droplets in mm. windows and there's there's the there's the bathtub and 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 there's the masturbation which in mm. women has this wetness thing going mm. on. So it's, the, it's very well crafted, but it just left me cold. Yeah. I just I, I, I just thought this is a bit boring, oh. and I know what the characters are gonna do next. Mm. Um, all of the characters were sort of stereotypical in a way. And I don't get at all why Octavia Spencer was nominated for for um, uh, for supporting actress because I thought that that was that role was such a stereotype of the sort of I'm sorry but I, I thought it was mm. such a stereotype of this sort of mammy character this this slightly overweight black woman who's sassy and 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 holds her own mm. and then ultimately is in the movie because she has to be the supporting actress. No. She can't be the focus of anything because because that would sort of still violate the rules of Hollywood in, mm. in some sort of way. And I don't know, I, I didn't think that there's, there was anything special about that performance at oh. all. Oh. It was, again, it was okay. But in, in that same vein, I could have given a supporting actor nod to Michael Shannon because he was also playing his role in a very stereo stereotypical way. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I, I, I thought that um, that I that I liked is because I'm a huge fan of Michael Stuhlbarg, mm. and he was now in three of the best nominees mm. movies. He's been in three of them, and he's good in every one of them. Mm. Um, and I've really liked him for a long time. He always gets sort of typecast into that certain kind of role, mm. except in Boardwalk Empire, where he's a bit of a tough guy, but even yeah. there he's the intellectual tough guy. But, but I, I, I really like him. I, I think that, I hope that he's going to win Best Actor someday. Yeah, he uh, probably will. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's been, like, the past 10 years or something like that have been mm. a really good, a really good period for him yeah. because I didn't know him at all before I think I think Cohen's A Serious Man no, was the first no. time that I sort of got to know him and now every time I see him every time he impresses me yeah somehow no but he's a really good actor yeah the point that I've been making and it's a stupid point but I'm still gonna make it <laughs> is that Matthew McConaughey as the merman it would have been so much better <laughs> I would mean, just, just imagine the exact same movie but just with Mr. McConaughey they're like <laughs> with, the, with, the, <laughs> with the actual abs yeah. showing yeah. Below, yeah. Yeah. below the prosthetics. 
Oh, uh, and another thing, I have to, I, I also have to commend Doug Jones because I, I, I think that, um, again, a role that's made for him. But I, I really like the idea that there's this one guy in Hollywood mm. who never really actually shows his face in no. any of, any of the movies mm. he makes. Uh, and he's this wonderfully physical, like, I think 60, almost 60 years mm. old or 55 or something like that. And, and even in this movie, although it was a stereotypical character and I didn't much care for the character itself, I don't think that there's a lot of people in this world, apart from him and like Andy Serkis, who can, who can project that much through no. that much prosthetic. And and still be kind of interesting. Mm, true. I mean, Circus I think is way more skilled. Yeah, he's a different well, kind of actor, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but they both have this thing that they're they're often completely unrecognizable. Now, but the face. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, Doug Jones usually doesn't do much with the face. It's yeah. more like just yeah, yeah. looking round. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's it's also because they tend to do things differently. Circus does most of his stuff digitally mm, true, and, true. and Doug Jones does, does a lot of practical makeup no. um, but he's physically he's really really talented no he is and have you do you know anyone who has actually I mean like really liked the movie like um, Mark Hermode really really liked the yeah. movie and I was a bit surprised by that but I, I thought that he's, he also said that, that, that there was this that there was this completeness mm. about the movie. To, for me, the reason that I think that it won Best Picture was that it was just Del Toro's... A, a lot of movies, like for instance, when the uh, Lord of the Rings movies mm. came out, every one of them was nominated for Best mm. Picture. And nobody really believed that they were going to win mm. the first time and not the second time. And I, th I, I sort of felt that by... The because Return of the King won Best, best Picture. Mm. And it isn't even the Best Picture out of the three. No. But I think that they gave it to that because they thought that it... They thought of it as one movie. No. And they realized that Jackson is an outstanding genius mm. in this particular field. No. So they sort of awarded it for the whole trilogy, but they can't say that no. because it has to be that movie. And I think that that happens a lot. I think that happened with Oldman this mm. year. That they gave, they finally sort of found a role. Yeah. And with Al Pacino, it happened with *Sen of a Woman*, mm. which is isn't his best best role no. by far. But but it was sort of a lifetime achievement yeah. kind of thing. And I think that this time it was Del Toro's turn. They thought that this is a guy who's been constantly making mm. interesting movies throughout the years, and it's kind of the Nobel Prize because yeah. the Nobel Prize isn't given out for that book yeah. that they they bring out. But it's thought of it as being a uh, an achievement of a mm. whole career. No. And I think that, that that was the reason, that's the only reason mm. that I can think of, that they would give it to Shape of Water. So they basically just cancelled the apocalypse. <laughs>